Hey everybody! One of the challenges that we run into as video producers is sharing large files. Video files tend to be pretty massive and we need to start shuffling those around the internet. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. I've seen a lot of people resort to Dropbox or one of the similar services that are out there. I think I have something that's a little bit better and depending on who you are you might be able to get it for free. So let's take a look. I see an awful lot of people in the video production world using Dropbox to share video files. This kind of drives me crazy for a lot of different reasons. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of those, but I think this is a company that overcharges for what they're offering. I think that they also haven't figured out security and privacy. That's something they're still working on and still have a ways to go. But the thing that drives me most crazy about them is they double bill for the the storage space that you actually use. So if I've got an account and I share a big file with you, you've got to have that same amount of storage available on your end. They bill you for that too. That just drives me nuts. Like why are they double charging for that? I think I have a solution that's going to be a little better for those of us who work in video production. And if you're an individual, you'll be able to actually get this for free. The piece of software that I wanted to show you guys is called Resilio Sync, and it's based on some old technology that's been around for quite a while, and that's peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. Remember the days of Napster? or BitTorrent, those kinds of things. This uses the same kind of ideas, but it does it in a secure, private, and easy to use manner. So let's just kind of take a look at their website just a little bit and see what they have to offer. I should mention that I have no relationship with this company other than the fact that I'm a happy customer. So they haven't paid me, they don't, they're not even aware that I'm doing this video. So let's take a look. So this is the Resilio website, and the product that I want to point to is called Sync. They have two different versions of it. They have a Sync for small business and a Sync for home users. So if you are just an individual and you're just doing things for fun as a hobby or whatever, you can certainly get away with Sync Home. But if you are someone who's earning money by doing video production related things, I would strongly suggest you go with Sync for small business. They're essentially the same pieces of software, just a few additional features here and there, and the licensing terms are just a little bit different based on who you are and what you're using it for. But I'm gonna to go to the Sync Business page. I'm gonna install Sync Home here in just a minute, but the Sync Business page actually kind of has a nice little summary of the differences between this software and an online file sharing service like Dropbox or Google Drive or one of those kinds of things. So Sync Business, which is most of these things are going to be true of Sync Home as well. The data is only stored on your devices. So your data is not actually going up to a cloud service anywhere. It's actually just staying on the devices that are actually synchronizing the files. So if I create a file share on my computer and I share my files with you, that data only lives on my computer and your computer. It never goes up to any cloud servers anywhere uh, out there on the internet. So we're, we remain in full control of how, where that data is going. The other nice thing is it's unlimited data because you're not storing the data anywhere in the cloud. You're not charged for data storage in any kind of way, which as such it uses your own storage space. So it's, you can save and share as much data as you have space for on your devices. And one thing I should mention about that, unlike things like Dropbox and OneDrive and Google Drive, the folders that you share can be anywhere on your computer, whether that be your main hard drive or SSD or external drives or whatever. The software just allows you to specify any folder anywhere on your computer to share, and I'll demonstrate using that here in a little bit. But that's very different than services like Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive, where everything has to live within a folder that that software designates. Let's jump down a few here, and it says much faster file transfer. I have certainly found that to be true in my own use of the software over the last decade or so, that uploads and downloads using this software tend to be faster than a lot of these file sharing services, uh, as long as the internet connection that I have and whoever I'm sharing with is, is pretty decent speed. But the other advantage we have there is that files start transferring immediately. You don't have to wait for your file to upload to a cloud service first and then download on the other end. It actually starts transferring right away. And so you're not having to wait for your upload to finish before you can start the download on the other end. Files start transferring immediately once you stick them in one of your shared folders. Another thing that they point out here is this is a secure way to share and send files. It's end-to-end -end encrypted and there's no cloud service that can possibly be hacked anywhere in the middle. It, the files are actually not stored in the cloud, so it doesn't matter whether someone's got your username or password for any online service, they can't get to these files because they do not exist in the cloud at all. Now there is one downside to doing things this way, and it's because the files don't live on any sort of cloud server anywhere. If you ever need to go and download one of those files on a computer that doesn't already have the Resilio Sync software installed, there's no easy, quick way to get to it. You can always install the software and set it up to synchronize a particular folder, 
but you're gonna have to wait for everything in that folder to download, not just the one file that you need. So this makes it not necessarily the best solution for sharing a single file, but it can make a great solution for any time you're doing collaboration with other people on a video project. Or if you need to deliver a lot of large files to somebody, this is a, a fantastic way to do that. Let's actually download the software and I'll show you what it's like to set this up. So I'll, I'll set it up to share a file from this computer and then I'll also connect it to another computer that already has files that I want to download as well. So as mentioned, I'm gonna download the home version because that has all the basic functionality that we need for this demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on free download. Download sync home. I'll wait for that to download. So I'm gonna go ahead and say save as and then save. And then I'm going to open that to actually start the installer. One option you can turn on here is to install Resilio Sync as a Windows service. And what that does is allows the software to run in the background when nobody is logged on. So if you're on a computer that you share with other users and you have your own individual user accounts, so different people are logged on at different times, or if you log off at the end of a session, you might want to turn that option on. When you do that, you interact through the software interact with the software through a web browser rather than its own dedicated user interface. But you can go either way. I prefer to not run it as a service, but whatever works for you. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on next to finish this up and ask for permission. And then I'm just gonna kind of get my browser out of the way here. And I'm gonna say my name is DJP and then agree to the terms of service and then go ahead and get started. Okay, all right, now what I'm gonna do here I'm going to skip the newsletter. i can do that later. I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I want to share one of the folders on my computer. So I'm going to click on plus here, and I'm going to say standard folder. For most situations, the standard folder is going to be just fine. It's all you, can, all you need. So I'll click on standard folder, and then I'm going to go into my projects folder here, and I'm going to share a folder here. Let's do, let's do this one uh, called Freedom Fest. Okay. And I'm going to say select folder. Now from here, we have a couple different ways that we can share this folder with other people. So we can share it as a link that they click on in order to set up the software, or we can use a key. So the link is the easiest for people that are receiving uh, access to a folder. I prefer the key method myself. It's just a little bit easier to, to deal with, um, but I'll go ahead and do the link method here. So I'm gonna share a link which allows people to both read and write, and then there's an option here to require approval for each person who is added to that, to that shared folder. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off, and I'm going to turn off the link to expire, uh, the option to expire those links. Okay, so I'm going to head and I'm going to copy that message. All right, so that's now on my clipboard, and then I'm going to open up Notepad and paste that in so you can see what that looks like. And when the person who receives that link clicks on it, they'll be prompted to install the software. If they don't, I haven't already, and then they'll be asked where they want to share those files. Now, that workflow is actually pretty easy for the person who's receiving files. Now, I'm going to show you the other workflow, which uses keys, which are just a long string of alphanumeric characters. So I have a, a shared folder set up on another computer, and I want to be able to share those files and download those files to this computer. So I'm going to go over here, and I've got, well, I've got that key stored in a text file. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to say copy to copy that to my clipboard. And I'm going to go back into Resilio Sync and click on the plus button here. And then I'm going to say enter a key or a link. And I'll click on that, and it's going to ask me for that key, okay? And then from there, I'm going to say next. And then it's going to ask me, where do you want to save those files? So I'm going to go in here to my C drive, and I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this one IP, because this, this is a, a video project about IP networking. And then I'm going to go ahead and say select folder. And then it's just going to start going. So here we go. So it already found the peer on the other side of the connection. One other person connected. You can see what we're currently downloading. All right, so just a couple of seconds have passed now, and we can see that it's already 9% done with that transfer. And this is a pretty large folder that I've shared. I think it's about 60 gigabytes. And if I hover over that, we can see that it's transferring in 112.7 megabytes per second, which is the maximum speed that my connection here actually allows. 100 megabytes a second is pretty fast. That's not megabit, that's 100 megabytes per second. So at this rate, I'm gonna be able to transfer all 60 of those gigabytes in about nine minutes. Now, if I want to see those files, the thing I can do here is I can actually click on this name, and that will open up a folder in Windows Explorer or Finder on your Mac, and that will show you the contents of the, that particular folder as it currently exists. So we can see that those files are now coming in, and within just a few minutes, I'm going to have access to all, all those files that are in that folder coming from the other side. Now, a moment ago, when I set up the file share, one of the things that it asked me for was whether I wanted the key that I was using to be read-only or read-write. 
In this particular case, I'm doing read write, which means both of us can make changes on either end, and those will be synchronized back to the other end. But you can also set it up to be read only. So if you've got files that you want to share with somebody, but you don't want them to be able to make changes on them, you can share those as read only, and then they can download the files. And if they make changes, they're not synchronized back up to you. So uh, maybe depending on the situation, that might be a more viable, more useful option for you. All right, so as mentioned, the home version of this software is free. So if you are a home user, you're just using this as a, something for fun, sharing files with friends or whatever, totally free to use, no problem there. If you are using it for business, I would suggest that you sign up for their, their business plan and just kind of let, let you review the plans as they exist right here, right now, at this particular point in time. So I'm going to go to the Sync uh, for Business page here and scroll down. And we can see, I'm going to select uh, the build monthly option. So those of, a, those of you who are wanting to try something for short term, you can see what it costs. So for $9 a month uh, as a small team, uh, by the way, that doesn't mean you can only share files with, with anybody on your team. You can share, still share files with anybody, whether they're you're part of your team or not. But $9 per user per month is actually pretty, pretty affordable for what they're offering here. I've been a user of this tool now for probably close to a decade, and I've been very, very happy with it. It's always just work, which, which is something that I can't say about Dropbox and OneDrive and Google Drive. I've seen all of those things get stuck where they stop synchronizing, and files don't get transferred when you expect them to. And not only that, this is a faster solution, and you're not paying for any storage. So. Anyway, great tool. I highly recommend it. And again, I have no relationship with this company other than being a happy customer. So uh, go, go try it out. They do have a free trial that you can download as well. So you don't necessarily have to sign up uh, as a paid plan in order to see if it's going to work for you. So if you have any questions about this or anything else related to video production, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Or even better, join me over on my free Discord server where there's a community of hundreds, if not over a thousand people who work in video production who know this stuff inside and out and are very helpful and eager and willing to answer your questions there as well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do video production related content about once a week and that is becoming more frequent now that I have a studio in my home. So anyway, thanks everybody for watching and have a fantastic day.